All right, thanks for uh, coming here during your lunch hour, everybody. I um, know there is a little bit of confusion and uh, whatever, but uh, you know, we're gonna do this. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to, uh, to say before we got started was um, total transparency. Soren and I decided that we would do this presentation like two days ago, so uh, um, I had to compress a, a lot of this. It's a, it's a presentation that normally runs about an hour or so, and um, I cut a lot of it out. I think I can get through it in 25 minutes, so we're going to go a little bit fast. Uh, worst case scenario, I go too fast and we have a little bit of time for Q&A at the end. All right. So. Uh, Starting off a little bit about me, I'm a cloud architect at N4. I work with a really um, talented DevOps team there, um, an agile DevOps and chat ops evangelist, uh, working with the uh, um, uh, agile groups in the community over time, past technology chair of uh, Agile Austin, where I come from. And um, it's provided me a lot of, uh, of uh, insight into how we can take uh, processes and make them a little bit more efficient. Uh, Chat Ops is a great way to do it. Uh, I'm an amateur chef, so you know we can always talk about that and trade recipes later or something. So uh, today, we're gonna talk about uh, what is Chat Ops. Um, we'll look at the benefits and how they apply, and then uh, we'll take a look at chat ops adoption. If I do my job right in the next 22 minutes, then uh, hopefully every single one of you will want to go back to your shops and implement it. I want to give you those, those tools. We'll talk about some technical things too, uh, also going with the, uh, the chat ops adoption, but how we do it on the technical side. So what is chat ops? <coughs> well, uh, it's generally credited to GitHub for originally coining the term several years ago. And what it is, is leveraging chat software to support workflows, to support our, our processes. Imagine an environment where uh, when you communicate pe with people in your DevOps organization, in your, your Agile organizations, that's, that's what you're doing. That's how you get your work done. You communicate with people. But what if you were able to communicate with your environment as well? If you were able to talk to your processes, your tools, your systems, your software, everything where it comes together in this big, huge conglomerate of, of just productivity. Doesn't that sound awesome? Well, um, that's one way to look at chat ops. I like a little bit more simplistic view. I found in a hip chat blog a, a while ago that chat ops is conversations put to work. So basically, just in the mere fact that we are communicating with each other on our day-to-day -day, uh, work life, we can use that to get work done. And chat ops provides us the, uh, the tools and the methodology to get there. But how did we get to, <coughs> how did we get to the, the chat ops uh, world? Um, how many people remember bulletin board systems? BBSs? Yep, I know. Old, 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 old. Uh, I'm, I'm just as old. So uh, basically what we had were these systems that uh, people would stand up, servers at their computers uh, at home. You'd dial in. Uh, there's functionality for, uh, for things like playing games, uploading, downloading files. But some of the modules allowed you to talk to other people who are dialed into that same BBS at the same time in real time. We move forward to uh, internet relay chat. Anybody? Yep, right here. I'm still in IRC here today. Uh, this is a granddaddy of all chats. Uh, it took the BBSs a little bit further because it started to establish a, uh, a more focused means of, of chat. It was just chat on, on the internet. But now we had a network of servers that stood up full time. You didn't have to, to dial into it to see the communications go back and forth. It was always there. We had our messaging golden era. Um, so this is like right around um, the, the early parts of, of uh, the century. Uh, we start seeing tools like Facebook chat. Uh, we start seeing um, we start seeing AOL and tools that, that are there to really promote the usage of, of chat, getting people comfortable with communicating, not just verbally, but textually as well. And we see this with all kinds of technology. Again, there's Facebook chat, AOL Instant Messenger, uh, Yahoo Instant Messenger, uh, text messaging on our phones to, to some extent. Uh, we finally get up to where we are today, which is with collaboration software. So this is software, things like Slack and HipChat, that were meant to allow us to work together. And uh, 
it, it focused upon some of the better ways for us to communicate in a group environment. Uh, there's searching, there's hy uh, hyperlinking between channels, there's the idea of channels that allow us to organize uh, thoughts into specific topics and, and discussions into specific topics. <coughs> um, but this chat software isn't enough to give us chat ops. What we have to also look at is the evolution of uh, how our architectures of, of applications came about. We started uh, back in the 60s and 70s with uh, terminal access and batch processing. So these applications were, were designed to, uh, to run in the background, no user interaction, whatever. Uh, we then moved to desktop applications where uh, we start to interact with the user a lot more. And uh, we get client server applications after that where the, the server is becoming a little bit smaller. The client is getting a little bit bigger in terms of where the intelligence and the software lies. Solutions come about with uh, web applications next, where the client gets even thinner, the server gets even bigger, but the distribution of the clients gets uh, a lot more spread out. We move to mobile applications, where uh, with, with this distribution, the, uh, the communication protocols get a lot more defined. So back with, uh, with the web, we started to define the communication channel a little bit more with protocols like HTTP. Now uh, with uh, the mobile era, we start seeing a lot more um, web services. We see, uh, we see a protocol of the protocol. I can run REST using HTTP. I can run SOAP over HTTP, et cetera. Uh, we finally go into this cloud-enabled application era. Uh, you can call it multi-tenant, you can call it SaaS, uh, whatever. It's, it, this, the idea is we're taking that, that communication, that really, really well-defined communication, and we're offering more solutions and services uh, third party. And that's what we needed to, uh, to really get to chat ops. We needed that collaboration software. We needed that, that services architecture to come together because the, the lap over in between them, that is chat ops. Uh, we can, we've got our, our solutions that uh, we want to talk about and that we need to, to work with, but how do we get them, how do we interact with them very easily? And um, that's why we needed that, that services architecture. So why chat ops? Well, it gives us a lot of benefits. I argue that it's going to help us build culture, improve efficiency, increase collaboration. It's going to help with training. There's a security aspect to it. And there's shared knowledge and understanding that we can get from our organizations with it. <coughs> so uh, what about some examples of this? Well, building culture. You know, it could be just as simple as looking at our common interest, finding things that we celebrate uh, in common with each other, any humor that goes on in our offices, uh, finding out what's unique about our organizations, or looking at process. And when we start looking at the utilitarian side of chat ops, process is big. Our culture isn't exactly uh, limited to how we decorate our offices and how we talk to each other. It's how we get our work done. If we go through a workflow in, in my organization, it's going to be different from, from another organization who, accomplishing the very same thing. And again, that's just a difference in our culture. So chat ops can help us with this. Common interest, you might have uh, an organization that's just full of cat lovers or maybe dog lovers. Uh, you might have a, a bunch of nerds that really like uh, to, uh, to remind each other about what the Jedi code is for Star Wars. Um, you might have an organization that uh, is very physically fit and physically active. Chat ops can come in and, and help you uh, build that part of the culture by keeping it competitive, allowing people to keep track of their activities. Um, more culture, there's uh, birthday celebrations, uh, which are important because they make people feel important and they make people feel like they, they've been remembered. But you might have some logistical things that go along with it too. When it's my birthday, I want my coworkers to take me out for lunch. And uh, the, the message and the conversation driven from that in the chat ops world can help facilitate that, that conversation, that building of culture. It might be uh, something as simple as, um, as just making people laugh halfway throughout the day. Um, you, 
your unique uh, situation for for your organization may be that you just can't find a, an easy place where everybody agrees to go for lunch. Step in with chat ops and you've got an objective bot that's going to say we are going to lunch at Taco Bell today and that is it. You know, speaking of food, you might want to go and uh, offer or order up some food for a scrum retrospective or some other business meeting. Chat ops can handle that. And before you start thinking that I'm off my rocker on this, 2016, Taco Bell announces that they're going to write a bot to allow you to order food through, uh, through chat ops. It's, it's out there. People are starting to uh, enhance it. Now, that said, if you're looking at uh, ordering Taco Bell for a work meeting, you really need to ask yourself why. Let's move on. So uh, there's improved efficiency, and this is probably where we're going to see a lot of the, the real utilitarian aspects of, of chat ops. So um, we get this through better repeatability, and we get this through self-service. So uh, what, what is a bot? A bot is just a piece of code that is going to be listening to, uh, to information flowing back and forth in our chat rooms and executing it. Well, if it's code, that means it's automated. And that means that we do the same thing again and again and again. We're going to raise our, our productivity. We're going to have the, the common tasks that we assign to our chatbots uh, replicated at the speed of a computer rather than the speed of a human. But furthermore, if we look at some of the information that's going to appear later on in my links, I'm not going to, uh, to drill down into the research right now, but uh, Forbes magazine says that we can lose as much as 40% of our productivity through context switching, from having to jump from one task to another and then back to where we were going. 40% of our work. Here's a good example. Well, no, you know what? We're going to go and hit the example when we hit the slide. So, um, d as developers, this is, uh, I've got a lot of developers at this conference. We build code a lot. And we're all familiar with uh, how painful that can be. Um, what if you build uh, modules in the wrong order? What if you forget a module? We, we definitely recognize that the repeatability and the, uh, the, um, the automation is important because we've got tools like Maven and Ant and, and Gradle that help speed those processes along and make it a lot more reliable. We can leverage that same type of, of mentality with uh, uh, chat ops and provide the ability for people to build code on demand using a chat bot. Code reviews. Uh, Chat ops and, and your bots don't have to be passive and just actively listening for, for command. They can actually drive the conversation. So if you have a, a simple problem like uh, people not doing code reviews because they forget about them, they're not aware of them, they're just being lazy, you can uh, bring your, your chat bot in there to remind people about it. Or get them to do their code reviews through public shaming, which public shaming is a very viable technique in my opinion. Uh, the, it drives some conversation. In this example, we can see that uh, a bot mentions that somebody's got a code review or three outstanding code reviews, and uh, through a course of, of conversation, another person picks it up. We're, we're helping the efficiency. We're working more as a team and getting better things for our overall shop. We can run tests. As developers uh, and engineers, we know that rep repeatability on tests is important. And the more that uh, we can run these, these tests again and again, especially on demand, then we're going to get better efficiency throughout our, our entire system. This is in direct conflict to the, uh, the waterfall world where developer writes a test and a QA engineer needs to, to manually run a, a set of, of test suites, but you've got to wait for the, um, that QA engineer to be available and them to have bandwidth. Make it happen any time. Deploying code, oh my gosh, you can do that again. Even more important than getting things in the right order for building code is shipping it to production. Have your bot automated and, and allow, them to, uh, allow it to take uh, whatever code you want and put it out to your production using a nice replicated um, repeatable process. You, uh, could have, um, you could have a nice, simple, little operational activity. In my organization, I've got uh, numerous VPNs. 
and everybody in, in the organization needs to go and log into to various uh, VPNs, so they need a certificate. They would uh, originally ask my operations engineers for it, and that could be a 10-minute task that they have to sit around and run commands, poke around, get the certificate, email it to the user, and it was uh, context switching them all at all times because these requests would come in bright er and early in the morning, late into the night. We put it into a chat bot. We made this self-service, and I get all that productivity back uh, for, for my operations engineers. I believe uh, the first week we had it out there, uh, there were probably 15 VPN certificates that got created. I had 150 minutes back of, of operations time just like that. There's increased collaboration. And this is probably one of the, the more interesting areas of chat ops because think about it. If you've got a chat room with a command or with a bot and people firing commands into it, it's kind of like a shared command line interface. It's a shared console. People can see what everybody else does in this chat room. So uh, you've got visibility into to work. You've got visibility happening, or visibility into the conversations that happen about that as well. So if I want to go and deploy code to production, not only can people see when I did it and how I did it and, and what specific version I put out there, they can see the conversation I had with the developers and the QA engineers about what was in it and why do we need to take that module and put it out into our production system. So with collaboration, it could be something as simple as uh, making it visible for people to see when somebody else is grabbing more work. And if you know that a given ticket is, is taken and handled, then you don't need to worry about it yourself. Plus you get an idea of what your, your other teammates are doing. This is, um, this is taking that, that whole need that we have for, for the uh, agile stand-up meetings and scrum stand-up meetings to the next level, keeping everybody in sync about the work happening all throughout the day. Uh, we can see and react, uh, collaborate on uh, events that happen. Maybe a broken build. When a build happens, that bot notices it, starts the conversation, gets people working on, on a solution together. Maybe it's uh, your production's down. If there is an issue, then uh, you're, again, your bot creates that, that conversation, gets people talking about it. And it may not be that uh, you have any technical thing that needs to happen from, uh, from your, your conversation about your production systems or whatever the event is. It just may be that people need to coordinate themselves around uh, the work. This uh, is an example. It's one of my favorites, uh, Red Alert. I hear that when, um, when Bit GitHub created and coined the term uh, chat ops, one of the commands that they, they had was uh, red alert, shields up. Uh, if they noticed that there was like a DDoS attack or something, uh, somebody trying to attack their systems, they issued this command and the bot went through numerous activities uh, to, uh, to recover from that. And a lot of it, uh, gave, it gave them a chance to, to collaborate around the, the issue as well. Um, Specifically with this, the, it was presented to me as an opportunity for, um, for you to do work wherever you wanted to. I hear GitHub engineers firing off the, uh, the red alert command when they were on a plane or in a taxi. This became part of, of my motivation for putting chat ops in place in my, my uh, shop. And uh, I did it because I made a promise to my wife that we would be able to summer in uh, Maine and Portland and, and vacation wherever we wanted to, but I needed to work while I was there. So I put this in place, and it was an amazing uh, shock that by being so, so selfish and, and trying to put that in place, I got a great collaborative system. Uh, I've got half my team in Austin right now, half in Argentina, and uh, we really pushed through to, to get a more collaborative environment because of this technology. Uh, you can uh, play planning poker, which is a task I'm actually trying to, to write. I think it's a great way to, uh, to take that agile ceremony of, of sprint planning and uh, take it to that next level. 
uh, training. You know, you can ramp up a lot easier and a lot faster because you can show live examples. No longer uh, do uh, I need to ask for somebody, uh, ask somebody, how does this particular thing work? I can. I could ask for it in a chat room and ask for that help, but somebody can demonstrate it to me. I could just be a lurker and watch people use the command, and in the act of people doing their jobs, I'm getting trained. Your chatbots can be a central point of help. Not only can they give help as to what, uh, what they are able to do, they can point out where your wikis are and show uh, where, where information is. So if there's ever any question you have about anything, your bot has the potential to, uh, to be the solution for that. Now, I saw a couple of you wince before when I talked about deploying things to uh, production and doing it with your, your uh, chat bot, because what's going to stop your receptionist from deploying code? Your bots can uh, act as a thin layer of, of, um, of security. The work that they, they do is coded into code, and it's only that small sliver that you're, you're exposing to uh, the outside world at that point. Uh, so what you're doing in terms of security uh, terminology is you're reducing the attack surface. Uh, bots can be audited and they can be made aware of roles. So deploying code, if I don't want my receptionist to, uh, to deploy code, then all my users in uh, the, the chat system have roles and the bot's aware of it and won't do the work unless somebody else approves it. It's a little bit of infrastructure work you have to do in coding behind the scenes, but it can help improve your security. Then there's shared knowledge and understanding. Uh, so um, it could be sharing knowledge about what's going on in your system. You've noticed something, uh, some weird behavior. Throw it into, uh, or let your chatbot expose it and have a conversation about it. Share the understanding of what actual numbers and performance values mean. Uh, it could be checking on the, uh, the uh, version of what you have in, in production. People want to know uh, bits and, and pieces of, of your infrastructure. Code it up. If you can monitor that stuff, why not monitor uh, RSS feeds and, and find out when there's new information that uh, you can you would learn about and uh, even have a conversation with your team to further um, push that, that information out. So really quickly, chat ops adoption strategies. Um, I'll tell you that when I first started uh, doing chat ops, uh, my, my bosses looked at me like I was off my rocker. Why do I want to go and spend all my time working on this toy chat program? Uh, We've got some strategies to make it work. First of all, if you keep it fun, and it could be just as simple as looking at uh, providing the current XKCD, um, if it's fun, people are going to want to use it. They'll come back to your chat bot again and again. Um, make it pertinent. So look for uh, tools and uh, tasks that are currently in-house. If it's relevant and something that you're doing that the chat bot can make better and can enhance, people will want to use it. Um, find a repetition. So we've all got tasks that people come in and ask us to do that annoy us. We've got questions that people ask us again and again and again that we're tired of answering. We've got things that people ask us to do at a certain day, every single day, run a backup, uh, create a user, import data. All these are, are tasks that uh, can be easily automated and great candidates for, for chat ops adoption. Get these in there and people will start to see increases in efficiency. P uh, your, your coworkers will be a lot happier and chat ops will uh, get a better adoption rate at your, at your organization. Finally, laziness doesn't hurt. So seriously, we got a lot of developers at this conference, uh, developers in this room. Find the laziest one you have. Give him a chat ops uh, framework, and then have him start to be responsible for some of those tasks, like uh, creating the VPN certificates, answering questions. A lot of those will get coded into chat ops bot functions faster than you can possibly imagine. I promise you this works. All right, technical implementation side. Um, the first thing you need is you've got to have some sort of chat client, or more specifically, you want a collaboration software platform like Slack, HipChat, Campfire. You can still go back to the granddaddy of them all and use IRC. Uh, it depends upon what works well with your budget, what works well with your technology, and your comfort level for security. 
Finally, um, or next you would need a bot server. Uh, Pick one that is relevant for your organization. If you've got uh, a bunch of um, Python developers, don't choose Lita, choose uh, which is more for a Ruby shop. If you've got Ruby developers, don't choose, I know this uh, uh, looks like it says Urbot, I'm told it's pronounced R2Bot. Um, make, choose one that is relevant for your organization. Um, there's also serverless implementations too. So if you don't want to go and run your own bot server, if you don't want to maintain that, that application, then uh, you can also use uh, serverless functions like uh, Google, Google Cloud Functions, AWS Lambda, and uh, just integrate your collaboration platform with that. Uh, they're serverless, they're very, very cheap. I can tell you that when I first started this, I didn't have a budget for chat ops. So I ran it under Slack with less than 10 integrations, which was free for all 125 users in my company. And then I used AWS Lambda, which generally speaking, uh, the charge is one cent for every million executions beyond the first three million executions. I ran for nine months straight with chat ops and I did not pay a single dime to anybody. Um, now, since I'm really excited about this and evangelizing chat ops, I wanted to give you a little peek into uh, what's into my mind about where the future is. So uh, one of the things I see coming is voice ops. I, you might have come to uh, one of my talks yesterday with uh, Ryan Vanderwerf about um, the Google Home development or uh, even the Alexa workshop. I see more devices and more AIs coming out. So it seems to me that the next logical jump is going to be interacting with bots, not just through through typing and text, but verbally as well. So I see this coming. I also see uh, something I call Chime Ops, and Chime is uh, AWS's uh, latest, latest um, solution to try to get to, uh, and, and compete with WebEx and, and Skype and such. But it runs within the AWS framework. So the idea that I've got here is that if cloud providers can start to make all of that information available through services like this, AWS could potentially offer chat ops out of the box using Chime and all of their internal uh, functions. So uh, with that, um, you know, we talked about what chat ops is today. We looked at the benefits that it could provide you across your organization, uh, saw the business and technical implementations, and even gave you a uh, look into some of my wild-eyed uh, uh, options of where this technology could go. So uh, here's some source links. There's some more source links. I will uh, get all of this uh, available and downloaded through, uh, through the site. And uh, are there any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, and it's um, it's a service that the an integration that the uh, that Slack offers or your your collaboration software. So it's listening, and then when it gets triggered, it just fires off a request to wherever your bot is. Essentially, that's what happens. It's a little bit more technical than that because you have to have tokens that go back and forth. But you set it up as an integration. Absolutely. Uh, Lambda, the API gateway. Um, if you create a Lambda in AWS, one of the blueprints for it is a Slack implementation. Uh, you can do it with uh, Java or upload the extra classes and implement your, your stuff in Groovy too. My pleasure. I'm out of time, so uh, we'll have to, uh, to bounce. And if you have any questions about this, just find me around and I'll answer them. <laughs>